Hello everyone, my name is Protasilaos, also known as Prot. In this video, I want to talk to you about the way Emacs handles the task of managing windows and buffers and how that differs from the st uh, traditional, the standard uh, approach. Uh, to illustrate my point on the difference between the two, I have uh, right here in front of me, I have opened the terminal emulator and inside of it, I am running a terminal multiplexer called Tmacs. Uh, you don't need to know anything about Tmax. I will just use this as an example to expound on uh, the general point that I am making. Uh, so just I just maximize this. The traditional way of uh, presenting running applications uh, to the user is that of the desktop. So you have uh, a finite uh, space, a surface, on which you are uh, placing your running applications. And as you keep on uh, working and you keep accumulating uh, running uh, processes, uh, your uh, applications will start occupying uh, a certain uh, position on the screen. Uh, in this uh, limited uh, space, they will be uh, at uh, specific X, Y coordinates. If you are using a tiling window manager, your running uh, programs will appear as rectangular areas that are placed next to each other. Uh, practically the same as what you are looking at right now. Whereas if you are using uh, the more standard uh, window managers, a stacking window manager, your applications will be on top of each other, uh, laid on top of each other, so they will be covering each other. Regardless of the approach though, the idea is fundamentally the same. They are both managing a limited space. And the workaround for this limitation is to implement a concept of uh, virtual spaces. Either they are called uh, desktops or workspaces or something to that effect. Uh, Tmax, by the way, has this notion as well. It's, it is uh, calling it windows, but don't worry too much about uh, the terminology. The idea is that uh, in those uh, virtual spaces, you are given, uh, again, a, a limited area where you can keep on doing the same thing that you did earlier, which is uh, to manage uh, using physical metaphors, metaphors from the real world, to manage uh, your uh, computer processes. Uh, and this is it. Let's close uh, Tmax and let's now come to Emacs and uh, talk about how Emacs approaches this issue. Emacs has a more computer-oriented way of dealing with this, of dealing, of handling running processes. In Emacs, practically everything you are uh, working on is a buffer. And buffers uh, are stored in a list that you can uh, access directly, you can access graphically or using uh, the, the computer way of uh, finding results, which is by performing a search. So uh, by matching spe uh, specific uh, candidates. Uh, but let's uh, take things one by one. Emacs, of course, has a notion of the physical space as well. Uh, in uh, Emacs, uh, the splits that you are making are called windows. So let's see that in practice. Uh, you are coming uh, from the traditional uh, metaphor and uh, your intuition is that if you want to open something, you want it to be placed next to the thing you are working on. So, uh, sorry, b before I do anything, let me activate screen key real quick. Let me see. Okay, so now you see what I am pressing. By the way, I will try to use the, the, tradi the default key bindings, but uh, out of habit, I might uh, default to some of my custom definitions. So if you see something weird, it's uh, one of my own key bindings. But I will try to stick to the defaults. So you try to open, uh, you try to split the screen and you want to open, let's say the directory editor, you want to open it diared, uh, you want to open it uh, on the space over here. By the way, check my backlog, I have some very informative videos about diared. And uh, you think to yourself, okay, this is very good, I have managed to have two windows side by side. And now you think, your intuition is, that if I were to repeat this, if I were to repeat Control x 4 and then D, and then uh, select, uh, let's say, Elpa, um, if I were to repeat this, you think that a third window will appear over there, and then a fourth, and a fifth, uh, and so on. 
Instead, what you get is still two windows side by side and the new window, the new buffer, uh, has taken uh, the place of the one that was originally over there. So let's say, uh, uh, so to speak, buffer number three has moved instead of buffer uh, number one, whereas buffer number two remains uh, here on the right. Uh, now, you may think that this is undesired behavior and you may try to uh, fix it as soon as possible. You may think this is very intrusive because you might uh, wonder where did your uh, file go? It was right here. I was just looking at it. But I think that this is uh, more speculation from my side. Uh, I think Emacs developers understand that you shouldn't be worrying about the management of a physical space and you should instead be leveraging, be harnessing uh, the potential of Emacs, be leveraging uh, the power of the computer and you should be using uh, uh, search to narrow down two specific candidates and work this way. Uh, and, but let me show you in practice so that I'm not too abstract and too theoretical. Let's open this file over here. And let's open now a, a new uh, split. Let's create just a new split. So we have this file mirrored on uh, both windows over here. Now let's say that I want to move to the directory editor that contains this file. I want to jump to the directory. And then in the other buffer over there, I want to open not any kind of directory. I want to open the Git repository, the Git project that is related to my Emacs configurations. Uh, my Emacs configurations are stored locally and I do not control them directly with Git uh, for reasons that uh, do not need to be discussed right now. So let's say I want to uh, open uh, a specific Git project related to this one. I can just do that and I open it and I see again this behavior I just talked about where it takes the place of uh, the buffer that was uh, the one before the last. Uh, no, the, yeah, the, the first uh, of the three. So I can see that I have now the two uh, specific, two, uh, um, uh, sorry, two file managers open. And let's say I want to copy this one and place it over there. I can do just that. And as I showed in previous videos, sorry, yes, confirm it and it will copy the result right away. Now I want to come over here and now I want to invoke uh, the Git client. Again, I see it is taking the place of that. Show me the differences, please. Again, I see it is taking the place of this one uh, and so on. I think, I think uh, Emacs developers understand that humans are not good at multitasking, even though we want to delude ourselves uh, thinking that we are great at this task. The computer is always better at it. So what Emacs developers are implementing here is a workflow that tries to keep you focused on the task at hand. So let me just uh, submit this. Uh, let's stage this change just to show you in practice what I mean by the task at hand. Let's say you want to commit this change that we just made. Look at this. This is very well thought out. This is great uh, design because I have right here the message that I want to write, the commit message. Let's say a minor uh, linguistic uh, change, I don't know. And on the other buffer over there, I am looking directly at the change that I just made. So I am just focusing on this task. I don't have uh, 10 other processes calling for, um, for my attention at uh, some corner uh, of the screen. Uh, I don't need that. I need to get on with my work, uh, do this, uh, push the changes uh, to uh, the upstream repository uh, and then uh, get done with this. So it's uh, closed. And then if I want to go back to a file, I don't need to worry too much about this. I just uh, search for it and I have a list over here. Let's search uh, for that file over there and I am back to this file and I can close this and I can continue working uh, right away. Let's again open a file now in another uh, split over there. So that's the idea. You can have two splits and then work on a specific task and uh, do things uh, this way. So 
the power of Emacs is exactly that it leverages the computer. And to expand on this power, you have to implement uh, packages uh, that uh, improve uh, the user experience. So now I want to talk to you a bit about uh, the packages that I use. Uh, and this is more uh, me talking and uh, you will have to uh, see uh, them yourself. Of course, the Git client is a uh, Magit. Practically every user of Emacs uh, uses Magit. Uh, the, the, can, the, um, the package that uh, controls Git repositories specifically is called Projectile. Again, this is a very popular uh, package. Whereas uh, the package that handles uh, the completion framework, so what you are seeing here, the, the selection of the items here, so if I were to write .org, for example, and how it would narrow things, this is called uh, Ivy. Ivy is the uh, completion framework and um, pr um, packages that uh, complement uh, Ivy are Swiper and uh, Council. And these uh, uh, use uh, Ivy, uh, sorry, let's go here. So Ivy, Swiper and uh, Council and they are used to narrow down uh, selections and help you get to the task at hand as fast as possible. Furthermore, let's come to iBuffer. Uh, let's come here. Uh, my computer is a bit slow because I am recording and I was doing also stuff with a terminal multiplexer. I, inside of iBuffer, so this is the buffer list, the entire buffer list. Okay, yeah, it's. Uh, uh, I can see that everything is grouped by project. I can see here. So I can see that projectile has been integrated with iBuffer. I am using another package for that. It's called iBuffer hyphen projectile. And this groups buffers. So everything that I have opened per project. And this is fantastic. So I can see exactly what I am doing on a per project basis. And I can be very fast and work this way uh, more uh, deliberately rather than trying uh, to manage physical space. I can be more focused on the task and I can use uh, the packages I just talked about to achieve uh, the uh, work that I am uh, trying to achieve. Uh, so yeah, that's the basis of it. That's the idea of it. Let's come here. Uh, I will link to the um, to my um, sorry, what's called the configuration file. It's uh, in dot uh, org. I will link to it in the description from where you can uh, find about more about uh, these packages. All of them, they are here working with buffers. I have uh, sections on uh, the matter. So it's uh, directory project buffer window management. This, ch uh, this uh, uh, section over there. Another section on selection candidates and uh, search methods. Uh, you can also find other packages such as the one that prettifies the org headers and uh, uses these uh, nice uh, circular numbers instead of uh, having things in uh, asterisks and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, we'll link to that in the description. The, uh, the general idea is that uh, you should let go of the desktop metaphor and you should instead be working with the computer as if it were a computer and not a desk. The desk is different. Use the computer to its strengths and let uh, the desk uh, uh, be the place where you place your monitor on. And of course, use Emacs's power to manage buffers and to work uh, this way. Uh, that's all for now, folks. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.